So this is going to be one of the most important videos of your life. Some of you may have seen it, some of you know about it, but definitely this is something that you need to see. It's very clear that the English language was created to be basically prison bars, invisible prison bars for everybody who speaks it, everybody who knows it as a base language. So just keep in mind a few things. Number one, Satanists. In order to be a top Satanist, you need to be able to fluently speak English in reverse. Think about that. They've programmed us since birth, including our language, and they have hidden all of these things. And when you see this video, it's almost gonna unlock part of your mind and it's gonna allow you to kind of see a glimpse of these bars, these prison bars. The last thing to keep in mind is just keep in mind that everything that's been translated to English, English was literally created to destroy everything and to mislead on everything. So all the translations of, for instance, the Bible and any other ancient text I guarantee you has been tainted via the translation. The only way to actually read a text is in the original format of the original language that it was written in. Anything else I guarantee has been manipulated and probably not for the good. So check out this video. I think it's very important. If you want to see more stuff like this, please join thedisclosurehub.com. Many ways to join. So today I want to go through a little more about how we languish in our language and why we can never get undone from our, the mess we're in because the words are basically uh, Phoenician, Latin, and Greek amalgamations with some British thrown in there. But it's all, a lot of our language is meant to deceive or have secret hidden meanings. So let, let's get into it. Now when you go into court, we're based on water. Our legal system is under Roman Latin law and we're considered to be at sea. We're fictitious characters, we're straw men, uh, but it's all based on water. And this goes way back to uh, the 13 and 1400s when Pope Boniface VIII said he's gonna be the vicar for Christ and created the first sesqv Unum Sanctum Trusts and put us on ships. And that's why we always have in our Admiralty Court, we're on our citizenship, we're on our leadership, we're on our relationship, we're on our ownership, friendship, hardship, partnership, membership, internship, warship, sportsmanship, sponsorship, uh, relationship, craftsmanship, companionship. Why are we always on a ship? We go into court, we go in through the docket, and there we find the bailiff who's going to bail us out. So everything's based on water, including our banking system. This is why we have a currency and we have liquid assets and uh, we have uh, 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 um, deposit slips um, and we have a docket. Um, we have cash flow, we have frozen assets and liquid assets. So everything is based on water um, when we're in the court system and we're just like I said, straw man and fictitious characters. Now this is uh, Jordan Maxwell, or I forget his other name. Uh, judges have a Masonic, Masonic hammer or gavel which they hit to declare the word of law. The idea of law comes from the biblical ten stone commandments and so it is said that you quote break the law. You're breaking the commandment. Judges always sit on three tier high platform representing the first three blue degrees of Freemasonry. The same tri-tier platform is found at Congress and the altar in most Catholic and Protestant churches three tiers high. That's also why you get give someone the third degree related to the third degree of Masonry where the initiated is asked a series of probing questions he must answer correctly in order to become a master mason, which is the third degree. Uh, there's usually a gate around the church altars, just there are gates and swinging doors in every courtroom um, called the docket. The congregation at church all stand up to recognize the priest just as all rise when the judge walks in. Judge takes a recess because he is in court playing a game of ten this commandments, ten commandments, with lawyers who play the dialectic prot protagonist antagonist game, bouncing the advantage into each other's courts. In the courtroom, witnesses must place their hand on the Old New Testament before giving their testimony, just as priest's sermon is often called testimony, also known as mon from moon in testimony and sermon. Also, to testify used to be you had to grab your testicles in the old, and that's why women could not testify, because they could not grab their testi testi te testicles to, uh, uh, to assert themselves in court. Also, the black robes are Saturnic uh, Satan robes, and the uh, uh, gavel is the phallic gavel of a penis that he's ruling with. As a witness swears in, one hand is placed on the Bible while the other is held up. In church, where parishioners feel the Holy Spirit offering during psalm, they will hold one or both hands up to praise the Lord. Quote, 
Then when you get further into Saturn, you begin to understand his color is black, and he was god of one of the many different Semitic tribes or groups, and one of his symbols was a square. Then you get into the square black mortarboard that the university or high school students wear when they graduate. When you graduate from high school, you come out of the processionally, processionally with a black robe, which is black for saffron, the god of Hebrews, requiring that you wear the square mortarboard on the top of your head. As I said, this is Saturnian uh, in principle. The square mortarboards are, of course, used by the Freemasons for their plaster, so that is why you wear a square mortarboard when you graduate, ultimately becoming an alumni. It all has to do with Freemasonry. It all has to do with control of the education in this country. Freemasonry is owned by the Jesuits. He doesn't go into there. Uh, Jordan Maxwell doesn't go to Jesuit, or recently has. Uh, square mortarboard on the head is usually black, the color of Saturn, Saturn, one of the ancient Hebrew gods. This is the same black used on the robe the judge wears when he is going to throw you in jail because black represents Saturn. Saturn is the old Semitic god. This is why churches and courtrooms look the same today because when you go into churches, you sit out here with the poor folks in the chairs out here in the pews, but you cannot go in onto the lifted higher elevation. You can't go inside the gate. You can't go inside the little doors. Only the priest can go inside there and officiate you. You stay on the outside with the poor folks. The altar is always raised at least three tiers because in Egypt that was the way it was always done. The altar was always raised so the people could see the representative of God dressed in black. The priest comes out of, on the altar dressed in black and he's officiating for you. He is the mediator between you and God. That is the same thing that happens in the courtroom. You walk in and you're a part of the poor folks sitting out there on your ship and here's the fence or gate that separates you. The attorneys, who are known as bar attorneys for British accredited registry, registered under the City of London, all U.S. bar attorneys, you must be a member of the bar to practice in the corporation of the courts, who are for-profit corp corporations in our legal system, and the attorneys are pledged to the British accredited registry, or bar, where the corporate papers are based in Puerto Rico. The attorneys go inside the gate, and you are the mouthpiece to talk to God and see if you can get off, and the lawyers will be the mediator between God and the judge who judges you and man. That is where all this comes from in our society of today. Jordan Maxwell, Matrix of Power. All right, we can go into court. We have a hearing and present oral arguments to plead our case. The spoken word over the written word. That's why it's Phoenician or definition. Definition, get it? This is why we languish, old French languer, be listless, pine, grieve, fall ill. From vulgar Latin languere, from Latin linguere, to be faint or weak with our definition of language. Alpha, beta are the first two letters that make up our language. Once you start to understand the meaning of words, you will start to see this reality. There are four things to consider. One, definitions need to be understood. Two, etymology of words needs to be studied. It's the study of the origin of words. Phonics is utilized in everything. This is where the Phoenicians are attached to phonics. Example, there's three definitions that mean completely different things. There's a letter C, there's the ocean C, and then you can see with your eyes. Four word splitting, the practice of splicing words into various ways to find hidden elements contained within them. An example of the word splitting is language. Lang, gu, age. Lan means monster that protects the noble ones. Gu, the god of war, and age, the age of the zodiac. So the final meaning of the word language is a monster of war that protects the noble ones or golden gods throughout the ages. Language, as we languish. A little sidebar fun. Why do we have noses that run and feet that smell? Why do we drive on a parkway yet park on a driveway? Why at a ball field, if it hits the foul pole, it's considered a fair ball and a home run? And why do we call it a freezer burn? Did you notice the term words is an anagram for the term sword? Switch the letter S in the term words to the front and you get the term sword. The letter S goes one way and then the other. So it also crosses over the other side equally and can go both ways like the S in snake, serpent, slither, sin. The letter M is shaped like a mountain. V for a valley. T as in top. B for breasts and D for dome, and C for crescent. Do you think this is by mistake? Do you think this just happens? No, this is all by design, folks. Words are like swords because they can be used to harm you. In a way, words are more powerful than swords for the reason that they can harm or heal you at the deepest levels of your being. In Greek, the term word means logos. The word logos is defined as, quote, 
the source that controls the universe, the written word or inspiration of God, or a logical and rational argument. In ancient Greek philosophy, the word logos is defined as, quote, the controlling principle in the universe. Belief includes the word lie in it, in the middle, to be lying, be lying with an F. Alien, I a lion. They're lying to you folks about the aliens. And then when you tell your vision, you tell your lie to your vision. Turn off your television and tell your vision, folks. And remember, when you say the word belief, you will be lying. You'd be lying with belief. Try not using the word belief. It's not easy to do. Question, what is the most important word of all time? The answer is no. Most people will spell it N-O, but the answer is K-N-O-W. Completely different meanings, but exactly sounding the same. It's meant to confuse by obfuscation. Matthew 11:15. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Earth is art of the heart. Earth, move the H to the front and we get heart. Hear, hear. Nothing is true. Everything is a lie, folks. They play games with us for a long time. All right. Another word that has a strong connection to the term word is the term light. Light is sometimes referred to as a photon. In physics, a photon is usually indicated by the symbol Y, which is the lower case of the Greek symbol gamma. Some etymologists believe that the Greek word gamma is where the word grammar originated from. In English, grammar means, quote, the study of classes of words, their inflections and their functions and relations in sentence, end quote. Spells are cast in schools and spelling, and the bell rings at each class to disassociate from the last lesson. This comes from Pavlov's dog theory, where they rang the bell and the dog would salivate. So they instituted the bell system into public schools and most schools so that the children, when the bell would ring, would forget what they just learned. You must remember the people in power do not want you to take their power. So they'll give you a little way up, and then they'll set up progressive taxes, but they'll never get to the top. You'll never take their power away because they're controlling everything. The ringing bell was taken directly from Av 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 Ivan Pavlov's behavioral science theory. Uh, okay, origins of our deceptive and deceiving language. Language is used to interact with one another. It's paramount importance in understanding law. We speak Phoenician each day without even knowing it. It's the language of sound. Before they had the written word, it was an oral history, oral language. Pick up the phone, phonics. When sounds, science of sound from the Greek phone sound from pi root ba to speak to tell to say what is definition it's a statement of the meaning of the term or the word or is it something else is it definition Phoenician that the Phoenicians and the Canaanites have defined the way we speak still to this day thousands of years later so you go to the elections and you make your selections but they're really gross misdirections when people vote, where do they do so? In a voting terminal or polling station. People are voting, not voting, because they are going to the polls, which the electric battery polls of positive and negative to place their votes on the candidate that they want to see out in charge. The politician that receives the most votes is that one that is going to be put in the position of power. It's, called power, it's not called power politics for, any, for nothing. It's also why we got credit charge cards. We're using electric. The Electrical College of Electors are the ones that actually determine who will be president, not any popular poll, poll, media, or statistic. Registering to vote is an admission that the declarant is subject to the exclusive legislative power of the corporate Congress and is a 14th Amendment citizen, a second class citizen when you register. Regis means crown, stir means to enroll. So you're enrolling in the crown, Regis, crown. By voting, you are contracting as a straw man, a fictitious character in the eyes of a law, a human resource, not a human just being. That's why they call us the Department of Human Resources, just like water resources. All right, a sidebar. Did you know the Jesuits invented the Fahrenheit thermometer? That's why when it unfreezes, it's at 33 degrees. Get it? All right, now we went through the banking stuff already with the liquid frozen liquid assets. Common law is also known as maritime law. Mar means sea law. This was in the 14th, 15th century. Like I said, the Testamentary Sesquivy Trust placed all lost souls at sea. 
So when we go into court, we sail in our citizenship to argue about loss and damages, our contractual relationships, partnerships, and ownerships. It's all about monetary loss and injury compensation. Who did what to whom? When we enter the court to play ball, we'll see who win in the docket. This is where the ship's berth. The rules come down from the three blue masons degrees with phallic gavel to determine who is liable. Okay, resident. Res means property or thing. To identify is ident. Identify the property or thing. You put a P in the front and capitalize it and mens principle. So the president of the Corporation of the United States of America, capital letters, Washington, D.C., is the corporate CEO, the president. He's ruling over the property or the thing. That'd be us, folks. Um, also, when you're born, you slide down your mother's birth canal and you land on your birth certificate where the hospital's paid to register and so that banker, banksters can account for you into securitized debt from the bankruptcy the United States never got out of since 1933. This is why the more debt they run up, the more we owe, and we never got out of bankruptcy since 1933, and our birth certificates are securitized, tradable commodities. All right, a government, govern, means to rule or control. Ment is for mensa or mind, to control the mind. They tell us what they're doing. Straw man is a front. A third party is put up in name only to take part in the transaction. Term is also used in commercial and property context when a transfer is made to a party. The straw man for the purpose of retransferring the transfer in order to accomplish some purpose not otherwise permitted. We're, we're, not, a, we're not humans, folks. We're a legal, fictitious entity. Since your birth, your artificial person has been considered a slave or indentured servant to the various federal, provincial, and municipal governments via your state-issued, state-created birth certificate in the name of you in all caps. Your birth certificate was issued so that the issuer could claim exclusive title to the legal person created. This was further compounded when you voluntarily obtained a driver's license and social security number, also all in caps. The state even owns your personal and private life through your state-issued marriage license, issued in all caps. You have had no rights since birth, marriage, nor will you have them even in death unless you recapture your straw man. The name on tombstones and cemeteries are also in all caps. The state holds the title to your legal person. It's created for your birth certificate. That's why they give you a certificate, not the actual title. The holder in due course of the instrument, that is yourself, has to reclaim and redeem it. The straw person is a person according to the legal, per, legal dictionary. Person, a human being, an entity that, uh, uh, such as a corporation that is recognized by law as having the rights and duties of a human being. So this is how they give you the rights, but they don't give you the knowledge as being a human being. So what is a human being? It's a person of the male sex. According to Black's Law Dictionary, which they use in the Roman Catholic law system we're still under today after, a you know, since 1400s. A human being is a male sex, a male of the human species above the age of puberty. In the most extended sense of the term includes not only adult male sex of the human species, but women and children. In feudal times, it was vassal, a tenant, or feudatory. All right, April 1933, this is when Roosevelt, the uh, Knights of Malta and uh, Freemason, uh, made executive order. All persons are required to deliver on or May 1st all gold coin cabillion now owned by them in the Federal Reserve. So they took our gold away. Now we're $21 trillion in debt, folks. Do you think they're going to do it again to us? Look at the new $100 bill. Half of it is completely in gold on the right side with a gold inkwell, a gold feather, and there's gold writing in the background. And if you look very closely, it's the second paragraph of the Declaration of Independence talking about abolishing the government, the new $100 bill issued in 2013. All right, in June 1933, we operate as a commerce. Commerce is based on agreement or contract. It's contractual law. That's why you sign your name, now a thumbprint or a swipe. You are agreeing to the fictitious character as a straw man. When the real flesh and blood step into their process, we become the surety for the fictitional straw man. It's a trust. We then become liable for the debts, liabilities, and obligations of the straw man, and we relinquish our protected characters. We stand up for the fictitional straw man. This is why when you go into court and the judge says, are you so-and-so, do you understand? And you say yes, you're agreeing to being that fictitious character. All right, corporation, the word corpse is the base root of corporation, all right? 
So ration the corp is to ration the corpse, the dead. You're rationing the dead. All right, and in Law's Dictionary again, only his successors in some particular station who are unincorporated by law in order to give them some legal capacities and advantages, particularly that of a perpetuity, which in their natural state as persons they could not have. In a corporation's soul, one person holds both operational positions of the organization. A corporation's soul may be established under legislative authority. It is considered by statute a citizen of the government. You are owned. The people are in, their, are in the state and national government at that time. The public government is artificial entity. Who is a government? Point to me as a person being a government. The government is owned and controlled by the same people. It's a sole organization, not an aggregate organization. The straw man being artificial lives in the artificial place called the public, okay? This is necessary and proper because the creator and entity has the right and control of it. So they, we create it by signing our name and they take control of it by putting it, us in their system. Since the government has created the straw man, it is only right that the straw man live under the rules of its creator. So far, the readers might be saying to themselves, what? Precisely what? A watt is a unit of power that is equal to one joule per second. And this correlates with the situation when people say someone isn't very bright because they need to ask the same question over again. What? What? Wait. That person is said to be dim because they are not enlightened. Dim wit. You could, of course, refuse everything that is being shown, but that just creates a neg negative ionic polarity charge within your own biology. Hence, to refuse because a fuse is an electrical device that interrupts the flow of current if it becomes overloaded. I trust this will not confuse the readers. The use of the word pin is the reason that banks get you to use a pin number when using a bank card. Well, the Spanish word born translates to terminal and the point of connection to current of electricity. When people travel to and from airports or bus stations where they arrive and depart, at the terminal. And as I said, when you use the credit card, you are charged as in charge card. Logos translates to ratio, symbol, reason, idea, and logic. The ancient Greek believed that the power of the logos can be expressed through words and be used to create mystical things through sound. Have you ever wondered why the symbols of corporations are called logos? It has to do with magic and sacred geometry. The process of using logos, source, energy, and force to create things such as sacred geometry can be seen in somatics. That is where sound is used to create geometric, sacred ge geometric forms. All right, cosmology and language. You know how the day of the week got their name. Sunday, it represents the mineral gold. It represents the sun's day. Monday is the moon day for Luna or Lunatics Day. Tuesday is Iron, Marty, or Mars, or Tyre's God of Ward after the Norwegian, Nor Norway God. Uh, Wednesday is under Quicksilver, the day of Mercury. It's Woden's Day, another Norwegian God. Thursday is the tin of Jupiter. That's Thor's Day, okay? Friday is Copper or Venara, Venus, God, Freya's, Aphrodite's Day, Friday, Freya's Day. Saturday is Saturn's Day, the god of every agriculture and lead because it's so heavy and dense. There's seven days of the week. There's seven sacred planets. There's seven sacred metals of ancient alchemy, seven continents, seven seas, seven energy shockers in the human body, seven colors of the rainbow, seven tones in our voice, seven year itch, seven hills in Rome, seven hills in Washington, D.C., and seven wonders of the ancient world in the seventh heaven. And look at how one is born into the world or world. Why are we world? First off, from a pedantic perspective, this should be obvious since the world is world on its axis. The writer of the Matrix movies also know, knew why, because the main character, Neo, is actually derived from the Latin word Neo that means spin or wave. The separation of our body from the sun works in a seven-step process. This is why there are seven major planets and give us seven days of the week. There are seven notes in the mode of music, and we also see seven in the rainbow. The color sounds and words that are world are all separated because the prefix sep comes from septum, meaning seven, which gives us the word September, which was originally the seventh month of the Roman calendar. There are seven chakras in the human body. The ancients called spinning the wheels of light. This is appropriate because their colored wheels are world, and we live in a world of colors because we are humans. Now you know why it's called humans. It was simply a word for color, and the quality of color determined the dominant wavelength of each color. There is an astounding amount 
of ind out of indication and evidence to show that we are multidimensional beings that are caught in a cycle of separation, which is a certain mathematical ratio of vibration waves holding us prisoner in an endless movie-like loop. The ratio is a ration of the God Ra, ra ratio within the base 10 reality. 10 fingers and 10 toes is the sweetest Teo states with the meaning of 10. The fake gods that hold us all prisoner also need a ration ration us because we are their food, and a ration is the food allowance given for one day. The sep uh, ration that is given to the gods while we exist inside of this are cinematic matrix reality. Here's an important one. Soldiers are sold to die. Soldiers sold to die. And that is why they have dog tags issued to them, as Henry Kissinger has famous said. They're the dogs of war. We are told never to swear. Notice the word where with the S in front. It can go both ways. Yet when we go into court, we must raise our hands and swear to tell the truth. The whole, with the whole in it, truth, and nothing but the truth. Yet few judges can even tell you the difference <clears throat> between the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I know because I've asked judges and they can't tell you. All right, when we submit, we place ourselves under the control of another. So when you submit an application, you are yielding your power. You let down, you put under, you reduce. When you apply, apply for an application. You put one's faculties to some task or career. Is there a war on drugs? Then why are there drug stores on every corner? Is there a war on drinking and driving and DUI, driving un under the influence? Why do they sell liquor at gas stations? To get you gassed? So this is why bail-ins are becoming so common now around Europe. A bail-in is when the banks come and take your money out of your account and say, sorry, it's not there anymore. They call it a rehypothification. This is stealing by the banks and brokers for their own purposes or called a bail-in. Uh, this is happening more and more. And with the United States, $21 trillion in current debt, I guarantee you, money in your bank account is going to be taken at one time or another, folks, because it's a promissory note and it's not your money. It's electronics on a screen, but you go and try and get your money out of there more than a, a few grand, <laughs> good luck with that. And if you do get more than a few grand and have to fill out of the forms, the IRS is going to contact you. Department of Homeland Security is going to talk, attack, uh, attack you as well. Um, and if you believe the FDIC has enough insurance to cover all your money in the bank and everybody's, think again, folks. We're $21 trillion in debt. How can they have money but print more money of fake non-value behind it? This is why they're coming for the gold. All right, a police state is a revenue agent making money, revenue agent that enforces the corporate government contracts and protects the assets of the corporate government, including human resources. It compels comport, conformance, performance, no injured party necessary. One who has policing powers is found in a police state. They're enforcers of policies. That's why they become policemen. And to register, literally, is to the queen, as I said. The regis meaning king. Uh, this is why you get a certificate and not title on your cars as well. The original car manufacturer owns the title, but you get the certificate. When you enroll, you register your child. You put it into inventory. Did you know that? People are known as chattel in legalese. We call, uh, we call our animals cattle. They call us chattel. Again, this is why we're called human resources. And just substitute the word uh, water for humans, and we're water resources. And on international well, uh, now another important thing is that our court systems, every time you challenge, you challenge up. So you go from the local to the state to the federal, and now you go into international laws. And it's even more corrupt the higher you go. So you never get satisfaction. It, it's, it's by design. All right, the matrix is furthermore the Latin word for womb which is where our where out body ship is our body ship is birthed and birthed all ships find their birth when they reach the port or dock when neil woke up in the matrix he was inside a battery womb or ipod which is why apple computer sells everyone ipods and ipads to reflect this the definition of pad that concurs with this is that of temporary living quarters we're all living on our ipads or ipods because we bit the apple of sin now you see here on the left that the original Apple computer sold for $666.66. Not a coincidence, folks, or a coincident. The word Apple is also phonetically spoken as a pull because our body ships are receiving a toe on the consciousness dream line of reality, which is why we have a skull. A skull, yes, because a skull is an oar that is used for sculling, and a sculling is the prop propelling of a boat by an oar of the stern. 
John Scully ran Apple Computer for 10 years. Another coincidence. Everything in this reality is designed to make us fearful, and this starts right at birth. It has been said over and over again to humanity that man is born in sin. Man bit the apple to then continuously be reborn in his, her, his or her Apple iPods, which becomes unrepayable debt. That is why uh, Webster's Dictionary defines English word debt is sin, to pay the debt of sin, which is the price of our birth or birth in the moon. Remember that seven days of the week do not include an earth day since man is truly born in sin. All right, another important one. How do you say hi to somebody? You say, hello. Every time we say hi to somebody, we're saying them to go to hell. This is how much control they got over our language. Every ship, including the human body, is eventually brought into port and then is docked. This is why there is a doctor that delivers the body ship because it is a new liver or liver being produced. Another, another living being that is being delivered by the doctor as docked or. Hence, doctor is phonetically docked or, and you as a human being are the or or the or that is going to be mined for gold in your mind because mind is mind, giving us the actual basis of the Sumerian depiction of the Anunnaki coming here for gold because we are the human resources that mind for gold. It's all a play on words, folks, but it has secret meanings behind it. This also displays the fact that humans are seen as chattel property or false gods. Uh, when they say it's mine, we are the endless resource being mined, and companies do not have human resource departments because the title sounds fancy. You're also ore, which has an ore because you're, you're the body ship that needs to paddle through this existence, which is the sea of electricity. Doctors use paddles to resuscitate someone who is in the cardiac arrest for this reason. Why do they use to resuscitate the patient? They use electrical currents, just like the sea that has currents. What else do doctors do? They perform surgery because of an electrical surge to the body patient. The docked or is also the connection to the body ship and sea terminology. Also, our, our, our money is current sea. Since the doctor has delivered the docked or, an or that is sitting in its berth and no longer rolling. All right, a double cross. We see them in the logos all the time. Look at on Exxon. Look at there. It's a double cross. Nabisco, a double cross. They're double crossing us, folks. An act of betraying an ally, friend, or associate. The cross of Lorraine has long a history of use in the secret societies. Uh, the Illuminati bloodlines, including the double crosses, use the crest of the Luthania, uh, Luthania, Hungary, and Slovakia. The Knights of Malta use the red cross, as does the largest company, oil company in the world, Exxon, Nabisco, etc., etc. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a whole, a whole list of these languages that we language in and how our language betrays us and how they use it against us. And the court system is rigged to put us on our ships and fictitious characters as straw man. And we have to get off the ship. We have to get away from the legal system. We have to create our new languages or we're going to languish in their dominance as we have been for thousands and thousands of years. And we have to stop the Babylonian days that have been going on forever. And lastly, I want to bring up the word Israel. The word Israel is Isis, Ra, and Elohim, the gods of ancients. Isis, Ra, the sun god, Isis, the moon god, and Elohim, the god of gods, Israel. It all goes back to the Babylonian days. So let's stop babbling on and let's move on. Thanks for listening from A Plain Truth.